If you're an international drone pilot looking to fly in the US, this video is for you. Whether it's for fun or business, we're going to break down everything you need to know before flying in America. Let's dive in. I'm Adam with UAV Coach, and let's begin with the rules for recreational drone pilots. If you are planning to fly just for fun, the process is pretty straightforward. First and foremost, foreign drone operators must follow FAA remote ID rules when flying in the US. If your drone has FAA compliant remote ID and is registered outside the US, you need to submit a notice of identification or NOI to the FAA before flying. You can do this on the FAA's drone zone website. We'll share a link on how to do this below. Next, you'll want to register your drone with the FAA. You can also do this on the FAA's Drone Zone website. It's $5, and as a recreational pilot, you can use the same registration on all of your drones, and you need to be at least 13 years old. Then you'll need to take the Recreational UAS Safety Test or Trust. It's free, and we're proud to be an FAA approved test administrator here at UAV Coach. Just complete the online training, and you'll receive your certificate of completion. On top of that, make sure to follow the basic safety rules, like flying below 400 feet, avoiding flying over people and vehicles, and staying clear of restricted airspace. And remember, even if you're visiting from another country, these rules apply to everyone flying a drone recreationally here. If you're flying for business, you'll need to follow a few additional steps. However, before diving into the Part 107 certification process, there's an easier option. You can hire a licensed Part 107 drone pilot. This saves you time and paperwork. You can even fly the drone yourself as long as the licensed pilot is supervising. If that's not an option, you'll need to go through the full certification process. The first step is to get FAA Part 107 certified, which requires passing the Part 107 exam. The good news is you can take this test even if you're not a US citizen. You will, however, need to be able to read, write, speak, and understand the English language. We have a leading online test prep course that prepares you for the Part 107 exam called Drone Pilot Ground School. It includes tons of helpful features like flashcards, practice tests, Spanish subtitles, and more. Check it out here or in the description below. Next, just like for recreational pilots, you'll want to register your drone. The only difference is that if you're planning on flying multiple drones, you will have to register each of them individually. You will also need to submit an NOI on the FAA Drone Zone website. Next, you'll want to obtain economic authority. This is required for foreign drone operators who want to provide commercial services in the US. You'll need a foreign aircraft permit from the Department of Transportation and must comply with FAA regulations. If your drone is registered in your home country, you should apply for the foreign aircraft permit at least 15 days before your intended start date, although processing can take up to 30 days. If your home country doesn't require drone registration, you'll need to contact the DOT, Foreign Air Carrier Licensing Division, for assistance with the application. For Canadian and Mexican nationals, the US-Mexico-Canada agreement allows certain agricultural and industrial drone operations, known as specialty air services, without needing to file for a permit, as long as the operation is covered by the agreement. If your operation qualifies, you can proceed without the permit. For other types of operations or clarifications, you can contact the Office of International Aviation at 202-366-2405. Finally, follow Part 107 rules. This includes things like flying within visual line of sight, flying below 400 feet, and operating in Class G airspace if you don't have prior authorization. And if you need to fly in controlled airspace, like near airports, you'll need to request Lance authorization. You can get this through apps like Aloft or Autopilot. So there you have it. Whether you're flying for fun or business, the US has clear guidelines to help you fly without breaking the rules. We love getting questions from international pilots, so if you have any more, drop them in the comments below and we'll be sure to answer them. If this video helped you out, make sure to like and subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Until next time, blue skies and safe flying. Thank you.